Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Julie from Camellia Crafts Designs and today we're going to be making some little snippet strips. Uh, I'd just like to say thank you to all my new subscribers. I still get really excited when I say it's gone up by one. <laughs> I don't know if that'll ever end actually. So thank you very much and also to people who've been commenting and liking. I really do appreciate it and it does help the channels grow when you do that. I've learnt that recently because I've never been a big one for commenting on YouTube channels but I've now learned if I want to keep seeing those channels I need to comment and like so hey ho right so this is what we're going to make a snippet strip I think in fact I know it was Artie Mays who I saw do one of these a while ago and I can't find it so I hope I can remember how to do it actually uh, the one we're going to make today is just going to incorporate a few more Edith Holden uh, bits and pieces in because I'm going to use it to decorate the pockets inside my Edith Holden journal. Anyway, I'll bob that to one side and I'll show you what we're going to need. We're going to need some masking tape, some double-sided tape, some bits and bobs that most people, sane people, would probably throw in the bin, but not me. I'm going to use them or I'm going to hoard them. And I've also bought this. It's some uh, Tim Holtz little snippets. These are called Field Note Snippets. They're the really tiny ones, but they're perfect for these. Oh, that's not causing too much glare. Yeah, I will link them in the description anyway. So before I tip all those out, we'll uh, make our base. So first thing we're going to do is move those out of the way. I normally do these on a glass mat, I don't know if I've said that. <laughs> but hey ho, I get glare off my glass mat when I'm filming. I'm not going to make one as long as that. I'm going to need two pockets. I'm going to use on my inner and inside front and back covers. So I'm going to need about 10 inches worth. And I've got centimetres on my mat. I like the purple side but it's centimetres. So what's 10 inch in English money? It is 25 and a half centimetres. So if I make sure I do it at least 25 and a half, I know it's going to fit. And we're not going to start at zero. So let's start at 10. So if we go from 10 to 35, then I know I've got at least what I need. Let's just touch it a little bit over just so I can have a little bit extra. I'm going to rip that off there. So what did I end up with there? I ended up with basically just over 12 inch. Yeah, just over 30 centimetres. So that's the first bit done. Put that strip on and I'm going to put my masking tape back in its plastic bag. It just seems to pick up all sorts of bits and bobs and fluff. Sorry about that crinkly noise. Now, next thing is I'm going to get some double-sided tape. I think I'm going to use the wider one on this. And I'm just going to place that down on top of the masking tape. Don't matter if it goes over a bit. This one is terrible, which makes it really easy. Don't put it away when you need another strip, woman. Put a strip there. Oh, I'm going to manage to get two strips of wide and a strip of narrow, am I? Yeah. That way everything's going to stick down nicely. We're going to use glue as well because... I don't know if you... If you want to show you the other one again. Some bits and bobs overlap. So... I think when Artie Mays did it, she also sewed it on a sewing machine. But I didn't bother with that. I thought it looked nice without it, so I didn't do it. Right, I'm then going to get my bone folder. And I'm just going to burnish that down to make sure my double-sided tape has stuck really well to my masking tape. Then I'm going to peel... Yeah, I'm going to peel it back enough. Yeah, she says. This is a job for... The blunt craft knife. 
I'm not allowed a sharp one. I'd do myself an injury. I do have a sharp one that I use if I actually need to cut anything. But I just use this. This is my poking craft knife. That's one off. Come on. You can do it. Go on. Two. As you can see, I'm just strategically placing the back in on the floor. I'll get that later. And that's all three off. So we've now got a strip of masking tape with double-sided tape on. I'm using masking tape because I do at some point want to peel this off my mat. It's not going to stay forever. So let's start. We'd first want to put some little backing pieces down and I'm going to start with some little strips of, I've got some checked tea dyed paper here. Shall I ink the edges? Shall I not? I'll do a little bit of inking. I'm just going to grab a random inker. And I'll just, I don't really pay much attention. I think I want my checks upwards though. It's not rocket science this bit. You're just going to randomly rip bits. I think that's going to be a big bit as well, actually. Oh, inky, inky. Got a little bit more ink on my dauber. Why well, use proper word there, dauber? <laughs> oh dear, look, that's yeah. If you watch Tanya at Tatty Treasure, she calls it a dauber, and she said to me the other day that it was funny when she saw me call it a dauber. <laughs> Well, yeah, dib dab dab. It does the same job, whatever you want to call it. I think I'll have another piece of checked in the middle. I don't know how quick of a video this is going to be. It's more of a craft with me actually than a tutorial, isn't it? Because I've just taught you everything now. Now I'm just playing and messing. Back in my scrap drawer. I've always got my little scrap drawer on the left hand side. Dead handy. I think I want a bit of music paper. That can go there. Just basically, I'm just covering this uh, piece of yeah tape. A bit of piano paper there. I don't think I'm going to ink everything. It's going to drive me insane if I ink everything. Take too long. Ooh, some doily, I'll put that on in a bit. Bit of just printed paper. Don't even know what it's from. That needs a bit of ink on because I've got a lot of white edges. I think I'll have that one that way. There we go. I'm liking it. What next? Bit more music paper over this side. They're surprisingly quick to build up these. I quite like them. What more? What next? Don't start dithering. Don't start taking three days to decide. Just slap it on. Every time I do a video, it's a challenge to myself not to faff around. I was watching, I was watching someone on telly the other day. Yeah, I actually watched some tea. What were it? Bake Off. You've got to watch Bake Off, haven't you? Great British Bake Off. And one at contestants, I can't remember her name. It, I thought, maybe I can. Maybe it's Lottie. She came out <laughs> with the word faffery. I loved it. So, a bit less faffery. That's what we need. Well, I do. Put that there. Do you know, I don't even know if it is a real word. Whether it is or not, I like it. Jiggery, pokery and faffery. Enough said about that now, I think. <laughs> Ooh, I'm liking. I'm not putting an Edith Holden uh, yeah, text on. For simple reason, I'm going to make some little embellishments out of the Edith Holden text. So I don't want to uh, be laying the same thing over. I might get a little bit of diff. Yeah, let's use a bit of different book page. I'm just looking for pieces now that are basically going to fill my gaps in. I don't think uh, Andrea Artemis actually filled all her gaps in straight away but I want to because I'm not as good as she is 
and I'd end up leaving bits of tape exposed and my journal would stick together and there'd just be a big disaster that nobody wanted. I'm putting a bit of glue on there because I'm overlapping paper and I don't want it to all peel up at some point. Oh, that's a cute tiny little bit of music paper and I think that will fit. Yeah, we're going to stick that there. Don't have to be it right way, does it? I can have it going that way. That's that's big for me, that. Because normally I do want everything to go the correct way. The text has to go across. Checks have to be lined up. Make that up first. And I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on this. It's going to cover that bit, but it's not going to cover it all. Oh, we're getting there. Ooh, that's gone a bit wonky. Oh, leave it. Leave it. World's not going to end because your text's not straight. If you watch my last video where I made those envelope tags, well, I fluffed it up at end, didn't I? I fluffed up the tab. I put one of the tab tabs on the side instead of at the top. Well, eagle-eyed people will have noticed... <laughs> But that's too small for there. Pop it there. On my thumbnail for the video. Yeah, I'd altered it. I'd just got a bit, another tag with the uh, tab on the top. Because it was just stressing me out too much. I couldn't deal with it. I'm not that particular in everything. There's just certain things that I just have to do a certain way. Uh, I think if I... Uh, Lived in uh, America, I'd be in therapy. <laughs> then I think I'd need it. Right, we've nearly covered all those little bits. Right, I'm going to leave the last few little bits because I think I'll get those covered with other things that I'm putting on here. Little embellishments. Right, covering cup for now. I'll even just put everything in it. Yeah, world might end. Righty ho. I'm going to bring in some of my little punches. I love punches. I've got a giant collection of punches. I've been collecting my punches. I'm not joking for about 20 years. I've got some punches that are so hard to punch. I have to stand up and put all my weight on them. But I've upgraded a few of them recently. Funny story with that one. I really wanted this stamp shape punch. But let's do a little. Let's do a little stamp with it. Will that paper fit in? Yeah, perfect. So that's going to be perfect for here, isn't it? A little stamp shape that really is holding. Anyway, the first time I ordered it, I didn't read um, description properly and I didn't check size and I bought this. I have never seen a stamp, this a punch, this small in my life. Wait till you see this. Do you know, I've got all this paper and I just can't choose the perfect piece. So that's the one I want, and that is like, mm, that, that's a centimetre and a half. That's a tiny punch as punches go. Look at this. Oh my word. What is that all about? It's not even straight. That is, how big is that? It's just over half a centimetre. I can't even think of a scenario where I'm going to need to use that thing. But I'm going to put one in here just because it justifies buying it. There were no point in sending it back. It would have cost me as much to send it back to Amazon as it had cost me to buy it. But yeah, if you're going to buy yourself some punches, please read the sizes. Because, yeah, I'm a bit derpy, as my kids would say. Anyway, let's get on with it. Right, we've got our backing done. I've got a few little Edith Holden bits with the numbers on. Again, this is something I saw someone do on Instagram. No idea who it were. If you know who it is, you can pop it me in the description. But I thought it were a brilliant idea. I've got some of the book pages with the numbers on the corner. And I'm just using my stamp. Oh, I've got 103 on one side, 102 on the other. I think I'll go for 102 side. I'm going to pop a bit of ink on it. And that's just a brilliant little embellishment now. I'm going to stick that somewhere on this snippet strip. I've got some butterflies that I cut from the Edith Olden books. I've used the Country Diary book and the uh, 
butterfly garden book and the yeah garden notes book but I'm gonna leave my big ones and put those on last as my final little embellishments so we've made a little 102 there and I've got a butterfly punch here I'm just gonna use some random Edith Olden text which one which one oh. I'm going to use this one and I'm just going to punch some little butterflies out and they'll have Edith Olden text on them. I think Edith Olden lovers recognise the text from the books. So that's a couple more butterflies I'm going to pop on this. So I'm starting to decide what's going to go where. Do you know because I punched out this little stamp shape I'm going to ink it up and use it oh it's playing on that side I'm going to ink it up and then I think I'll put my little butterfly Katie cornered across it that's that oh these are so small I don't always do good with little tiny bits I lose them have you ever had that way of hoovered up a tiny little one inch square of paper that you really wanted and for a minute you have been tempted to empty that over and get it back out I know I have but it's just not worth it, is it, for a one inch square of paper? I don't like it when you hear something metallic rattling up over. Oh. Does anyone else use over for getting rid of spiders? Oh, I do. Really. I didn't used to. They didn't bother me spiders when I was younger, but now I'm like, spider. I've been known to be spiders up at two in the morning. It's a good job. Now it wakes my neighbour up. Right, so I've got a few of those. We've got that, got them. I'm going to open my little snippet packet out now. I, I, well, I don't know if you're like me, but I'm from Yorkshire. And we're well known for being a little bit frugal in Yorkshire. So I don't want to use too many of these. I want to hoard them. I'm just going to tip a few out. I don't want the big pieces, so I'll pop them back in. Ooh, we've got mushrooms there. Oh, they're brilliant. Oh, I'm going to save those because I'm doing a few little autumn theme projects. But what I want for now is some of these little square ones. Oh, I like that. So I'm just going to put, I'll bring the other one back in to show you again. Most of these are made with digitals, but there's actually some real stamps on. They were, they're not Tim Holtz ones. A lot of these are Artie Mays butterflies. I think that's a Shabby Dabby Doodah. More arty maze. You can do it with anything. <laughs> so stuck back it to me. Oh, that didn't happen. Oh dear. Well, that's like so. It's another lesson in how not to craft. Right, I'm now going to stop faffing and start actually sticking some stuff on. Because I am really going into faff mess and yeah, faffery mode. Yeah, that's it. So I'm going to call it faffery mode. So I'm going to use these big ones, as I'm calling them, big compared to some embellishments I'm going to use, just to cover up some gaps in tape where you can still see bits of tape. So another one, that one's actually got a butterfly on, so I'm going to put him right on end because I don't then want to cover him up with anything. He's going to be part of the final thing. I like how irregular some of these are. And I'm not going to bother inking them. You could waste your life inking everything, couldn't you? That one there. It doesn't really matter where you put them. It's just quite random. It either look good or it won't. I don't know. I'll have that that way. If we're going to care to corner it, we can't do it the same as the last one we did. Oh, that's a big one. Right, I'm now, uh, what I now have in mind is that I'm going to be using this in two separate pieces that are going to be about five inches long. So you see that centre bit? I'm not going to put anything across it. So what I might do is put one big label in that I can cut in half. Oh, do I want to do that? I, don't, I really don't know. Do I just want to leave it blank? I'm going to, I'm going to leave that as it is for now. I'm going to stick one of these big labels over here. Yeah. Happy with that. I 
think one more. Oh, I've got some dark ones I'll put on when we're near it to being finished. I'm saving my mushrooms. I feel an autumn strip coming on. What, what am I calling it? Strip it. Strip it. I know. <laughs> Snip it. Strip. Okay, that could have, that could have said something much worse there. Put that one there. Right, I think I've got enough of them on now. I'm going to move on to some tiny little Edith Holden bits that I cut out at books. You know them bits that are no good to man the beast? Right there. Oh, look. A flower. Doesn't even matter if they're like cut in half like that. That came from edge of a page, that flower. But I'll just hide that under something. That's another tiny little Edith Holden bit. That's going to go somewhere. What other bits have I got? It's not even that, that's just some random greenery. I'm going to use one of my punches and just punch a bit of random greenery. I think that looks good. Again, if you're an Edith fan, you know that came from that book. Or maybe you don't. Ooh, that's going to go there. There. Have we got any more Edith bits? I thought I had more, but my desk just turned into a disaster. Is that an Edith butterfly? I think that's a that's an Edith butterfly, isn't it? Got another little Edith flower. Put up a bit more income. Yeah, I think this one's got more smaller bits on. I'm going to have one bit of yellow on each side. So I think that bit of yellow I'm going to put. I'm going to pop it there, then it looks like that. Butterfly nearly landed on it. <laughs> nearly, but missed. Now that's half a flower. So what I'm going to do with that half a flower is I'm going to just butt it up to something. So it looks like it's covered up. It doesn't look like it was just half a flower. I've snipped from book. So there we go. That's half a flower next to that bird. Let's put this big flower on. I think I'm going to cover some of this flower up because there's too much yellow so that can go yeah I'm gonna put that one there and then I'll put something else over it in fact I like this black piece oh no we've got too many labels there if I do that let's try one of these Tim Holtz flowers no I don't know what I'm gonna put there I'll think of some at oh butterfly no hmm I'm wondering if I put that flower in the right place now really don't know Oh, what about these? Yes, I'm going to put a little book page butterfly on it. Yeah, that book page butterfly landed on that flower. Yeah, that's better. So, what else we got? Hmm, I'm going to glue my number down, I think. And then I might pop a few more numbers on it. A number there. Put my little stamp shape on. I'm going to have something else going across that. I think. Yeah, a butterfly. Let's put one of the actual Edith butterflies on there. Because this side's beginning to look just about finished. I think there's, an, it's, there's enough on that, isn't there? Maybe something there. What we've got here. No, it's too blue. Well, I'm singing that Madonna song now, True Blue. Oh, I want that one there. Don't. I drive my kids mad with that. <laughs> Whenever anyone says anything that's a song title, I'll, I'll start singing the song. I'm not going to sing on YouTube, though. I am actually completely tone deaf. But even if you're tone deaf, you can sing at home. What's that? A little butterfly. Let's have him. But you can see this starting to come together now. You really can't go wrong. If I can make one while talking, anyone can make one, can't they? Where are we going to pop him? There. Another butterfly there. Yeah. Let's do another book page number. What have we got here? Number 53. I'm going to do this with my oval punch.
There we go. 53. A little bit of ink. You could even just cut out little stamped pieces. So we've got 102 on that side. So let's have 53 over this side. Yeah, you could cut out little, you could stamp little words or tiny little images and cut them out with your punches. You don't even need to cut them out with your punch. You can just cut round them. I know we say that all the time, don't we? Junk journaling is not about perfection. Do what you want. If indeed we are junk journaling, but that's another story. I'm not even going there. Don't even go there, Julie. No, don't go there. Right, you can start to see now that's looking okay. There's a big glaring gap there. And that, I think, is where I'm going to put my big butterfly. Oh, I've just gone and stuck that leaf right in the middle, haven't I? Oh, well, do you know what? I'm not going to go any further to that end. Because we're looking for roughly five and a half inch pieces. Yeah, that's going to give me five and a half from there to there. I don't actually have a journal to show you how I use them. But other people make these. It's not... It's not a new thing. That's going to go there to cover up that huge gap. Oh, yes. I like that. So, do we need anything else? We're just about done. I'm just going to put a few little bits on. As long as I've got a few of the key butterfly images from the Edith book, a few of the numbers, a bit of text. I don't know, I'm going to peel that off. I really don't want two numbers right next to each other. That's the star. There you go. That's now gone up the other end. I want something else there. What do I want? I don't want a mushroom. What about that little stamp? Yeah. The little Tim Holt stamp. I'm starting to like these Tim Holtz bits and bobs. I'm just going to tuck that under the number 53. So... That's going to be on one pocket. That's going to be on another. I'm calling this finished. I like it. I'm just going to press it all down. You might find after you've peeled it off your mat and put some ribbon on. Let me bring my other back in. If I bend it, can you see? That really could do with a bit more glue on. But I'll do that when I fix it to my project. Yeah, there you go. Twins separated at birth. They're quite similar. Right, let's move all these bits and bobs out of the way. Put lid on ink. Now, this is a bit where it can, like... I keep wanting to swear when I say this bit. Go wrong. So, on my glass mat, it works. On this. Mm. So, I have used dark glitter throughout this, so it should have dried pretty quick. And I am just gently peeling my sticky tape up. Can you see how I don't put it too fancy on end? Now, let's see what happens. I've got the masking tape. And it's, it's coming off okay. I've probably glued some bits to my mat without glitter. But I'll get them out. Oh, look. I did it. It's come off. I'm quite impressed with that. That's looking pretty nice. Now, I'm going to turn it over. Because I like to put my lace on when it's this way around. So I'm going to bob some lace in. This again, it's a bag I got off Amazon. Can you say, I don't like shopping me, so I just, everything I want comes off Amazon. <laughs> it's not off Amazon or eBay, I don't craft with it. Now I'm looking for one that's slightly wider. I think this one might be okay. This is, um, it's like an ivory, ivory off-white lace, this. Oh. Let's just turn that over. Oh, that's going to be lovely. There's just a little bit of lace going to show. I'm quite liking that. So I've cut a little bit more than what I need. And I'm going to use... Um, yeah, I am. I'm going to use that. I'm going to use that, yeah. That three-in-one glue for this. It dries nice and quick. And it doesn't leave, it doesn't stay too sticky. So I'm just going to put some on my, oh don't move too much, 
on my masking tape and then I'm going to use my finger just to smooth it out a little bit because you don't need an awful lot of glue to stick a very thin lace yeah then I'm going to get my wipe clean my finger and then I'm gonna now normally I'd stand under this <laughs> to make sure it's straight but hey ho I'm just gonna pop that on I'm not gonna press it down yet excuse my head there you go that looks about right and I'm just gonna press it on I am getting a bit of glow on my fingers but again we'll clean it off so we've now got our lace on the back I'm just gonna let that dry for two seconds before I turn it back over but that is your snippet roll ready to turn snippet strip done and dusted do you know what I really like that let's get a bit of cream card to place it on so you can see the effect of the lace oh look at that Yeah, you can have a little bit of a closer look, and um, yeah, that's lovely. So I think again, do you know when I do something this quick, I'm always shocked. Cause making that on my own without the camera on, it probably took me an hour, and that's I don't know how long it's took me because I don't time them. That's why some of my videos get ridiculously long. But anyway, that is gonna go on the inside covers of my eighty thousand journal, and yeah. So I might as well end that there then, seeing as I've finished, haven't I? So thank you for watching. Uh, if you're new to my channel, consider liking and subscribing. And I will see you next time. Thank you very much. Bye.